Welcome to the extended version of the parametric Eiffel Tower tutorial. Uh, today we're going to go into a little bit more detail on how this tower was made, going component by component. And to start off, I'm going to first off erase the, this code and show you the Rhino components. So we have the tower's roof silhouette here with the balcony drawing. We have the English cross girders and beams which serve as the structure's uh, base piece. And of course we have the arc system which can be found at the bottom of the tower itself. Uh, these can be made directly in, uh, in Grasshopper, but to keep this code simple they have been left outside of it. Okay, so to start off, we're going to start off with a polygon, which, which will serve as the very basis of our tower. From here, you can change its position, you can change its radius, and you can change its segments. In this case, we do not need to change its position, but we will change its radius. So I'm going to place in a number slider of 10 with a value of 5. Then I'm going to copy and paste this for the segments and change it to four, at least to keep it as close as possible to the original design. Okay, once that's done, you want to join this into a group. Let's name this base polygon, even though you can name it whatever you see fit. And the first thing we want to do after that is to explode this uh, polyline here into its segments and uh, as we can see here on the outputs of the of the explode we have now four line like curves but we have five vertices and we only need four because five will mess this code up and to change this we just need to add in re remove duplicate points we can add these five points in there and then we will have our necessary four points okay just like that Next up, we want to add in a offset curve, and this will be for our segments, like this. And now, even though the, the value we want for the distance will, will be one, we want to keep this value flexible. So I'm going to add in a number slider of about 10, place it in there, and then yes, uh, bring it all the way back down to one. Also, one way to not mess up the, this code too much is to double click on this uh, number slider here and you want to change your minimum value on this one to three so that then you have the minimum value of three and you won't have your code completely messed up and bring this here next up we want to explode our offset curves so that so that we can extract its uh, vertices we have eight here so that will be two per curve and uh, now we want to separate these so the so that we have all of the ext extremities separate so we have four four here and four and four there we want to flatten all all of these values so that they don't get mixed up when we set up our line like that. Now you might have noticed that the, the, the line is forming where the previous explode was and what we want to do here is, is make sure that the line is occurring between these points, these points, these points and these points. And to do that we need to add in a shift list like this, place, uh, place it in here. However, once I place it into the line component, you can see that the code gets jumbled up. Just to see it a bit better, I'm going to select all of the previous components and simply hide them. Okay. So how do we how do we fix this? Well, you want to add a value in your in your shift that allows your curves to achieve the desired result. In this case, my suggestion is double dash minus one, so a, a negative value. You, pl you place it into the shift, and now yes, the curves are how we want them. Now, you want to, of course, go back to, the, to these points here, 
Now we we want to find a way to ro rotate these points to this side in order to be able to make our the, our diamond shapes, which will serve as the basis for our uh, tower. And to do this, we just need to go into rotate. We can add in our curve as the as the plane. As for the angle, we want to, ch to change this to degrees, and now let's write in double dash 180, which which will be the degrees we want to to rotate. And now we can pick up on our points, place them in here. And yep, now we not, now we have the, the points where we need them. Let's of course hide these. Let's hide all of these here. Uh, actually, let's show these and show these ones as well. Pardon these these ones here so that we have the visible points we need for our uh, diamond shapes also these ones these ones will also be important and now to make the diamond shapes themselves to do this we need just to place in 4p let's put in four point surface like that and now this order might be it might be a bit tricky, so make sure you get this right before you move on to the next phase. So you want to place in your um, rotated geometry into the uh, A input. Uh, you want to place your shift list, these ones here, into your B input. And now for the C input, you want to pick up on these previous points. Let's place them in there. Okay, looking good. And now you wanna you wanna pick up on your A points from the this patch and place them into the D input. And once we hide all of these with Control Q, now we now we have our uh, towers base. Let's close this into one group. And I'm gonna name this uh, Foundation Plates which will serve as our basic plates. Let's leave this one on. Actually, let's just make sure we uh, graph these now because in the, the future, we're going to need to, to keep them separate in order to make our uh, lofts, which I will show in a few in a few minutes. Now, moving down, we want to build the, lo the loft rings in order to properly coordinate the uh, upstream or maybe downstream loft di direction. And to do this, we want to first off get ourselves a move. Let's, pl let's place in our original polygon in there. Uh, we want to get ourselves a Z value. Uh, and now you want to have two di two different rings, and to do this, you want to add in two different number sliders, and with and with different values. So in uh, this case, I'm going to add in one at ten, and I'm going to add in one at forty. Now place one in there, and then with your shift key, place the the other one in in there. And now we we have our two examples here. And they can, of course, be adjusted as you see fit. I'm going to keep them at their original values, like that. Okay. Let's uh, graph these because we're 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 going to need them separated. Uh, and now we're going to need to e extract their centers. So, pick up on an area a component. Let's get their their centers in there. And now we're going to need to scale them. So, I pick up a scale. A component we can place the centers directly in there and and of course our geometry inside the geometry input however now as we can as we can see here they have the exact same scale scale factor and we want to give them different values prefer preferably a lower value for this one and a higher value for this one here and to do this you want to add in I'm gonna place in a number slider at 1.00 this this will will be for the smaller one and you want to add in another value i'm going to put this one at 1.0 there we don't want them to be any any bigger just small now as you can see here both values seem to be to be locked on the top one and to solve this you just need to go into into your factor and graph both both of these of these values here Okay, looking good. In this case, I'm going to keep the lower value at 0.5, uh, 
And I'm gonna keep the higher value, or in this case, the, the higher rectangle, at about uh, 0 0.01, the very minimum value, because in, re in reality, we barely want this separated at all. Okay, then we can finally flatten these. And now we just need to dispatch them. Otherwise, the dispatch won't work without this flatten. And now we want to explode both both of them separately. So one, and of course two, like that. Preferably, we also want to uh, graph these, graph all of the values, like that. And then we need to extract, actually we need to remove once, uh, once again the duplicates as we did before. Okay. Actually, if we, only, if we only have one curve, let's just remove these for now, just to check something out here. Okay, still, still looking good. Uh, and now we want to add in a orient command in order to move the plate foundations to these higher levels. So my my first advice here is to simply hide these all to clean up the image a bit. So hide these, okay. Next up, what we want to do here is to add, well, first off is to graph these points here so, so that we can keep all plates separate. Add them in here. And now we also want to add in our previous points up here. These ones specifically, and to do that, let's copy the, this code here. Let's uh, keep it uh, graphed and bring these vertices into here. Now, of course, get out, get our previous geometry into here. Okay, looking nice, looking really, really good. Um, actually, if I use the, this one as well, yeah. That's how you know they uh, won't they won't work because without graphing them, the, the code will will simply assume that you want to copy all four at the same at the same time. So keep them keep them graphed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and of course, we can now hide these as as well. Of course, if you're seeing these uh, plates now, the logical option now is to write in loft. So that so that that we can finally join them, and the, the the way the way I found this loft works best is if you place the original plates in first, and then pick up on the on the previous ones here, and of course something something of uh, this nature might happen, and uh, the only way I found that you can actually fix this is it is if you can graph your 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 elements in a uh, in a previous stage. So if you go back into your original explode explode curves and simply graph these, your code now replaced again should fix the the, the issue. Hmm. Oh yeah. One thing that that usually solves the, the this issue is simply to switch these points like that uh, we didn't we did not would not want to sw to switch the order at, uh, at this phase because it will it will begin to mess up the, the code in further in further parts to keep in mind that uh, when we're when we're using values that are simply grafted like in like in these examples here that uh, sometimes they're uh, can be mix-ups in these orders, so always place them and adjust them very, very carefully. Okay, so after we got these lofts done, now we need to go and de de deconstruct our rep in order to be able to get out their faces, edges, and uh, vertices. And, and we're going to start tinkering with the uh, faces. Of course, we can now hide these, and these, and these as well. Okay, 
So since we want to use these faces individually, we need to grab them. And now the next thing we we uh, want to do is start to add in our uh, English grid system to our uh, columns, let's say. And to do this, the first thing you need is a surface box. Surface box up here, exactly. Which then we can we can add in our our surface here. And the next thing we're, we're going to need is to add in a uh, domain. And to build this, we just need to add in a uh, divide domain squared like that. We can we can place it in here and our faces in here. Of course, as you can see here, all of these values are really exaggerated. And to adjust this, uh, what 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 we want to do is to add into our u value a number slider with a value of forty, like that. And uh, since since we do not want to change the the number of English crosses we we want on the, the side let's just place in double dash one and place it in here okay looking a bit better okay I'm just gonna close this off into a group I'm gonna name this the uh, grid system like so okay and uh, now, how do we pass this uh, cross onto the structure surface? So to do this, we're gonna need to add a box morph, which is the appropriate one. Uh, let's let's set in our um, our surface box. We can also graph this so that all, so that it all remain, remain separate. Let's add in a brep so that we can finally set our cross in. So set one brep like that. Now we're going to need a bounding box in, or in, in order to fit this to these ones here on the surface box. So we add this in here. We add we add our brep into the into the geometry, and then add add our box. Okay, they're all in in the, in there now. Okay. One thing to add, which is very, which is very important on the surface box, is the uh, height. In this case, one is too high, so let's place in a 0 0.05, like that. Let's place it in there. Okay, much better. And now, if we if we hide all of these elements, what what we get in the end is our now finished structure here. Okay, looking really really nice. Let's also hide this here. Okay, looking cool. And now let's pick up on all of these items here. Let's close them into yet another group. Let's just uh, space them out a bit so that they are easier to move around. We can name this, I'm gonna name this one frame application. Once again, you can you can name these however you see, you, you see fit. Okay, and that's our base structure. Uh, moving on, the next thing we want to add in are our lower panels, the, the, the ones that operate in this in this lower area here. And to do that, uh, we first off need a list here. List item. Let's place this in here. Oh, pardon me. We we want to play to place our uh, edges in here, and as you can see now, we now we are now selecting at least one edge per column, and uh, what 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 we want to uh, have here are both side edges from uh, each each column, and to do this, the, the values I find that uh, work work best are double dash zero and copy and paste this one double dash 10 so now if we add them in one and then shift the the uh, the other one here as you as you can see now we have successfully isolated the two side edges on each column 
uh, let's uh, let's graph these for the same reason we've been grafting graphing all other, all other values and uh, now we want to evaluate curve evaluate curve okay let's place this in in here and uh, let's place in our values at 1.0 which would be the equivalent to 100 percent and then copy this again because we're going to, to, to need two uh, columns of points. Now, as you as as you can see here, as I change the, the these points, let, let me just highlight the evaluate curve. They're only changing down down here and not and not affecting the the entirety of the of these curves. And to change this, all I need to do is re-parameterize. Uh, which essentially will make these uh, values act almost like a uh, percentage. So if you consider th this value your 100% as one, of course, then yes, your value will now cover the entirety of your curve. Like that. Okay, and the same thing here on this one. And now let's adjust these to uh, their proper values. I'm going to place this one at 0.2 and this one at 0.15 or 15. Okay, looking nice. Uh, now we need to dispatch these values. In this case, they dispatched out nicely eight in each position. No need to uh, graph them. Now we need to make a line place these in here on the line yeah exactly like that we uh, want to have these lines in, in in order to create a ruled surface however you will notice that I can't exactly join in these uh, these items here that will not work so we need to copy and paste this this patch here or add it if you see fit and then yes we can add in our our values However, once again, they seem to not be working. That's because we we first off need to check how these points react. As we can see here, our B list is empty. And to correct this, all we need to do is flatten our items so that they will 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 become properly separated into four lines on on one side and four lines on the other. Of course. The ruled surface is only acting inside, inside the, the columns and not in between them. This is the similar problem to when we were building the found the foundation plates. And to correct this, we just need to add in a list item. Oh, uh, pardon, a shift list. Okay, we add in our our B value, and last I check, the uh, shift the shift offset of one works perfectly and therefore you have your ruled surface between the columns like that okay now we can uh, graph these again and uh, now we need to repeat the same process done with the with these values with these values here so I'm just gonna bring them up to the front uh, now we want to repeat this process again, so let's get ourselves a divide domain square. Let's place our ruled surfaces in here. And uh, I'm going to add a height of about two values, like this. And also add in, a, uh, add in, add in about 10. Uh, 10 might actually be a really high number, so I'm going to bring this down to about 5. Okay, nice. You want to go with Add, add this one in here now of course at at first glance this this might jumble up your uh, your code a bit and now we simply uh, pick up on our divide domain domain square and with and with your shift shift key we can place it into the domain input yep and just like that we now we now have our lower level here or in this case lower lower panels I will now select this entire part of the code, hide it, and now let's select all of this stuff and let's group it into what I will now will now call lower panels. Okay, bring this code out here a bit. 
Let's space this up a little bit like that. Okay. Let's move on to the uh, arc. And to do this, we want to copy these co uh, this component here, like that. Now here we will only need one one new one new value. So I'm gonna place in 1.00 again, since we're dealing with a reparameterized curve. I'm gonna bring the this value down to about 10, like that. Let's just take it out of hiding. Okay, that, that's about the perfect height for it. Okay, now we want to, to add in a uh, line command. This code will be very similar to the, to the top one and you'll see what I mean near the end of it. And now we want to pick up on the, the values from uh, this previous this batch in this case it will be the b the b value value here and you and you will then have lines I exactly going on the lower on the lower part we can now we can now ha hide this part this part here and leave the lines there and of course we now need to flatten because we will need to make yet a second this batch let's use it like so and now essentially we are uh, repeat the same process as, 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 as last time. So we add in a shift list. Let's place it into here. We can also add in a rule surface. So let's place in our A value and our, and our B, B value. And just like that, the, uh, lo the lowest of lower panels are working nicely. Of course, we then we then need to graph these to keep, to keep them separated. I'm just gonna bring the, this code. Actually, I'm gonna bring this one up to the front. I'm gonna keep this one here like so. And uh, now we need to get ourselves in another surface box. And uh, here, since we don't need to make any kinds of uh, divisions, like in uh, Pre in uh, previous codes with the um, divide domain, domain square, all we need to do is add in our, our, our surface and add in our domain, <laughs> and it works perfectly. And of course, I advise to copy to copy and paste this uh, slider here with the with the previous value. Add it in like so. And uh, now we can close this. And now, essentially, we ju we just repeat what what we did in the previous code. So box morph once once again. We then we then add in our values. Keep them keep keep them graphed, of course. Let's add in our brep. And in this case, we want to use our arcs. So let's just make set multi multiple breps like so uh, bounding box once once again to match the box morphs bounding box uh, also ma make sure that instead of per object you uh, have this set to to union box and let's place this into the reference uh, input add in our geometry now let's hide all of these and as you can see here we now we now have our uh, arcs set wonderfully mm -hmm. okay we're getting close to the to the end here okay let's pick up on this entire on this ent entire code let's close it into a group I'm going to name this one arcs Okay, now let's work on the upper ring in this area here. And we're going to, st to start off like a few minutes ago with a list a component, so list item. And in this case, we also want to connect it to the, to the edges, like that. And in this case, we want to, to, to have the uh, outer um, segments of our lofted columns. And to do this, the value I've found that works best 
is the um, 11th value. So as we make a list with this, I'm going to place it in here. Yep, just like that. Of course, you can play you can play with these values around with a uh, number slider if you if you believe you can you can find a lower one. Then we need to uh, graph these once once more. Copy these here and simply change the value so that we can get our evaluated curve. Of course, you might want to change the, the, this value here because we, we want this to be a bit close to the neck of the tower, like that. Uh, and now we want to flatten these. And the reason for that is so, is so then we can connect them using a polyline. Okay. However, as you can see, the, the line seems to remain open. And to correct this, all we need to do is go into this input here and go into set boolean and change from false to true. Okay, now we now we have our closed line. Moving on now, we want to create a loft that that will will give us the overall crown shape of this area here. And to do this, we need to set up a loft. We can place in our curve here. Now, of course, this loft with only with one curve won't do much. However, we need we need to flatten it for for all the other incoming objects. And to add those objects, we just need to get ourselves a move a component. Uh, we can add in our values in there. Now let's add in a Z value here. And now we will have to deal with the same issue as as uh, last time when it, when it comes to organizing our, our our values in the number sliders here. So to do this, I'm going to get ourselves a 1.00 here, and I'm going to connect this here, okay, like that, okay. And you want to bring this value down to about 0.15, 15, okay. Now I will copy and paste in this code, join, join it with a shift. I'm going to bring this up to 70. It's about 70, yeah, that looks good. Okay, looking nice. You know, in this red color, it kind of looks like the electricity tower in uh, Tokyo, which is, all, which, which is also uh, an option here. <laughs> and now we repeat the process as we did before simply adding in an area so that we can extract the center points for, bo for both of them. And uh, we also add in a scale. So we want to add in our geometry into here. We want to add in our, cent our centroids there. Uh, 5.00. Yeah, it's essentially the same, the same thing, only, only with an extra zero. Let's add in both, value, both values here. We're gonna need to, gra to graph these. Also, we're gonna need to graph these geometries here. And of course, graph their centers as well. Okay, and now let's place these values in a, in a, in a way that they make a nice crown-like silhouette here for both of them. I'm gonna put this at 1.10. That should be a good enough value. And for this one, I'm gonna put this one at 1.60. Should be just about fine. Okay, and now all we, all we have to do is add in these values up here. Okay, that's our base, actually our um, upper ring crown design, let's say. Nice, okay, uh, so with this done, now all we need to do is select all of these items. Let's close them into a group and of course hide them except for the last one. I'm gonna name this the uh, upper ring. Okay, looking nice. Uh, and that leaves us with the very last component needed to finish this incredible tower, which is its very top. 
and we're going to need primarily our our vertices these ones specifically so the, the first thing you want to do up here is to add in a list let's copy and paste this because we're going to need two different kinds of points let's add ver let's add vertices on both cases okay They might be on the lower part though. Yeah, exactly. So now we need to bring them all the way the way up here. One of the values I find that works best will be two. Exactly. Place it over here. And of course, let's copy and paste this. And now I'm gonna change this value to four. We want to get both uh, the most centered values and the most and the most outer values. In order to make the lines that will help us unite this shape. Okay, good. Like a like a cross. Let's get our middle point curve. We want to keep our curve pre-assigned up, up here, so let me just go back down here to our top curve. Let's set one curve like that, and uh, let's go back to the very, to the very top yet again. And uh, now for the, this curve here, we want to add in an orient because we want to bring it all the way up here to the to the top. Place it in on the geometry, and now let's get ourselves some endpoints. Place them in there. Now in this case we want we want to go for the starting point. And for the for the place where we want to place them, first we will need a rotate. And now we can we can add in our middle point as we did before, like like that. Uh, we do we we not need to change the this value which by default is 90 degrees so we just add in our line on the ge on the geometry part so that so, so that we can rotate them like so and uh, then we need to add in a um, construct plane so that so that we can properly position these so let's set in our rotated line onto onto the y axis and our original line onto the x axis nice and of course if we add this in in here oh yeah and of course we also need the we need the uh, origin point let's hide all of these here okay let's see here Geometry, okay, looking good. Uh, of course, as you as you can see, these are rotated in the wrong direction. And to solve this, we just need to add in another rotate command. A command here. This time, we need to change the, these at 180 degrees. So let's place them like so. Add in our geometry here. And uh, we can get we can get our points once again from the back all the way to our turning arrow. Now, if we if we hide these, yeah, nice. We now have our, our four silhouettes. Now, how to join them? Well, the first thing we need to to, to, to do is to get a shift list because in in this case we want each silhouette line to connect to the, the the one either on its left or its uh, right so we place our 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 values in here one works wonderfully let's add in a ruled surface like that oh yeah and uh, do not forget to to uh, flatten these so that they can be properly positioned like that yeah 
you wanna you wanna flatten the items so this ruled surface in the end can interact with all the silhouettes equally, and not in separate groups. Okay, now all we need to, to, to do is get is get ourselves an uh, antenna, and to do that we just need to deconstruct our 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 brick, the final one of course. And uh, now we want to get ourselves a list item, so that so that we can uh, isolate what we want out of the out of these edges. In in this case, we want the uh, top ones. So what I find is that the one value works best, exactly where we want them. And in the end, we just need to add in a simple extrude. Place it in there, a Z unit in here, yeah, and now I'm going to add in a 10 number slider to give us our adjustable height. Let's bring this down to about 4, which is a value I think works best. Bring this up to, to the front, and uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. We can now join this entire code. I'm gonna call this one um, tower roof or top, however, however you see fit. Yeah, and that's the uh, complete tower. Of course, we want to maybe change cha change its color to something more more in line with the Axocraft brand. And to do that, all we need to do is get ourselves a custom preview here. Let's add in a swatch. I'm gonna go for uh, our, our classical yellow. So like that. Oh. Hold on. And about mm, yeah about about there. Okay. Now we just need to pull in all of our elements so we so we want the top one to go in there we want our antenna with the shift key we want our general structure of course also with the shift key oops okay and we also want to add in both the arcs and the upper ring Let's close all of these. Yeah, and that's essentially how you uh, set up the parametric Eiffel Tower of Paris. Let's change the, the, the cell to about six, just to test it out. All right, six-sided Eiffel Tower. And of course, you can always add as many sides as you as you want. Take in mind though that the more sides you add, the heavier this code will be to compute. Hmm. Turns out I also forgot about a group uh, group here. The loft rings. Okay, guys. Hope you like this uh, extended version of the tutorial. Uh, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it really, it really helps me to keep these tutorials going. And uh, yeah, share it with some friends. And uh, hope to see you back here next time.